Have a good day, Zal. Uh, it's been good. It's, it's been uh, busier than normal, which is a, a good thing, but uh, certainly uh, felt like spring break and the days off came at a, a really good time for uh, for our program. You mentioned Monday on the radio that you're going to adopt the Greg Popovich philosophy of day on, day off, day on, day off, just to give those guys a break. Should you strategically do that so that way you guys can make a trip to Charlotte tomorrow to <laughs> Yeah, I would have liked to have gone to uh, the ACC tournament, but considering we're in the uh, the big dance, uh, I'd probably get videoed and accused of live scouting. So uh, I'm going to avoid that. But I, I know uh, I know a few of our people are going to try and head down there, like uh, Chelsea Mangino and um, probably Stephen Gonzalez, being as how he's a Wahoo fan, converted Wahoo fan. So no, that had nothing to do with the strategy. Happened. I know it was a little bit of a scramble there when the inbounds pass came and Scotty missed it. But was it your design to just go into action immediately? And then, you know, how far down the list, or if that's the right way to put it, was Georgie for getting that shot? In the yeah, I think for us, John, we were the play uh, didn't go as planned. Um, although we got it to Scotty eventually, and that's where we wanted to get it. Um, he had to come up with a loose ball because Cooper. Uh, Cooper's a great defensive player. Took a little bit of a risk in trying to get the steal. Same thing happened in the Darius McGee corner three. Um, but once, for us, once a play breaks down, we go into concepts. And uh, it won out because uh, Georgie made the shot. But Lavelle made a great play to uh, kind of get it towards the lane, draw two defenders, and kicked it out. And uh, when it went in, it uh, was obviously a little excitement on the bench. Well, Georgie Pacheco Ortiz is, uh, and I think I said it the week before the game, that uh, he's operated in a bit of obscurity, invisibility, if you will, because he's not a he's not a stat sheet stuffer. He's just dependable, and I think for him, uh, down the stretch last year, he was he was worn out, as you well know. We had a shorter bench, and he and Lavelle logged a lot of minutes. So uh, I think he was fresher this year, but I also think. He was more mature and realized that the burden uh, wasn't just his own. And, and I think because of his teammates and their belief in him, uh, I think he he really did a good job of just staying in his lane. And uh, that kid is, I'm, I'm telling you, as a coach, the worst thing that happens during a game is you don't know what's going to happen next. And Georgie, on most occasions, alleviates that worry. Um, it, really, it's there's no change other than we don't know our opponent. I think our program is one that just continues to pursue getting better. And uh, um, I, I heard a great analogy in uh, in a sermon podcast the other day, uh, where the guy talked about uh, the importance of a long runway. And uh, whereas when you're depending on where you're flying out of, but sometimes that runway can look like a dirt road but the, the plane needs a long runway in order to get the speed to get the height to get the elevation in order to uh, start it start its journey so we've been on a long runway not just from the day we got the job but uh, this season it feels like it's been long so I think the beauty in that is uh, our guys are really committed to to staying on the runway and and buying into what we've determined is the way we need to play to have success. And I don't think that'll change because we're in the NCAA tournament. You mentioned in your interview with Dave uh, Teal uh, earlier this week about how the similarities between 25 points set back at Tennessee, I believe the third year, you and Tony were at Virginia, kind of coincide with the 20 point loss to Lipscomb this year. Have you seen the parallels in the way the group, both teams have responded um, each in their respective seasons? 
Yeah, the uh, the game you're referencing, uh, we got beat at Tennessee, and they had some pros, like a bunch of them, and uh, we got boat raced. It was it was bad, and we met at the private terminal in Charlottesville after the game for about what seemed like till four in the morning. It probably wasn't that bad, but. Um, but I remember feeling similarly, similarly after the Lipscomb loss. We we just we we weren't we weren't ourselves, and it was what seemed devastating at the time because there was so much riding on the game. And uh, as I mentioned, for me personally, a chance to validate our program and all that. So, uh, but it was really good for us. And I, I know you can't see it at the time, but what it did for our guys is it we recentered. And uh, we, uh, it, there wasn't a verbal expression to do this purposely, but we, I think we uh, recommitted to being about uh, the stuff that allows us to be successful. So I don't, I don't think we win the conference tournament without the loss to Lipscomb at home, nor the loss to North Florida at North Florida, where we gave away a 13-point lead. I, I think both of those games uh, helped our cause, if you will, in the in the A Sun tournament. No, no, none whatsoever. And I've been asked by other media's media outlets that, well, what seed do you? And and if this happens or that happens, you could be a, a guys in the NCAA tournament. You're going to play somebody really good, and unless you're on that 16 line, you want to avert that at all costs. Uh, but it it really is. It comes down to matchup and matchups. And I, I I hope you guys understand. We could care less if we're. 12, 13, 14, 15, that, that's just a number by your name. What is more important is um, how you're playing, the confidence you have going in, and I think how you've prepared for this moment. Because uh, it's a big stage. There will be a lot of uh, attention on our guys. and uh, I, But I, I think that's the, the neat thing about this whole process. We get a chance for many to get to know the people that we do life with every day, and they're fabulous. So. Uh, we won't be defined by a number or a venue, whether we got to go to San Jose or is it San Jose? Salt Lake City, Jacksonville, Hartford. Look, I'm excited to just go anywhere. It, it's hard to get to the NCAA tournament. Coach, 10 years ago, you made a decision to go to Charlottesville as an assistant. And now as you look back on the last 10 years and where you're sitting today, how much of those six years with Coach Bennett uh, helped prepare you for this last four-year run? Oh, tremendous. Uh, it, uh, I said to one uh, writer that uh, I got mind space back. I think sometimes when you're a head coach, especially given the path that I took to get there and the circumstances that happened in my family and in my individual life, um, when you operate out of a place of woundedness, uh, you'll fill that, that wound with whatever you can. And for me, it was performance. It was gaining identity from success and affirmation. And that it's a hard road to hold. Oh, because it's it's very unfulfilling. It's unsustainable. So I, I think just being able to slow down and and start walking uh, was was really good for me. I didn't have the pressures of, or the magnitude of responsibility that uh, a head coach has, and I got a chance just to serve Tony in a way that um, I felt like my role was important, even though it was very invisible and he probably didn't need it. Um, but I also got to watch him do it, and that was that was just like a classroom. I mean it. I had an internship my senior year of college with the Seattle Supersonics, which I'm really hoping they come back. And uh, my class schedule was legitimately, I went to work at the Sonics office from 9 o'clock until 2 o'clock, and then I went to practice. It's a pretty good schedule. But I learned a whole lot in that office and uh, around uh, the administration that the Sonics had at the time and, and the team. And UVA was very similar. I learned a whole lot. In, uh, got a chance to pour into some players that um, I just think it helped reshape uh, my intentions in being in coaching as well as obviously the basketball part. I was better equipped to be a head coach. Tony said in his interview, I believe a couple days ago, that he was watching Sunday's game and he kind of got into it a little bit more than he wanted to question some foul calls, like uh, chit on another way. Are you going to be the same way this upcoming week watching UVA? <laughs> I've been that way for – the last four years, like I watch them whenever I can, and uh, you know those guys are like family to us. So yeah, uh, 
I'm, I'm not usually yelling at the TV and the officials because they can't hear me, um, but certainly root hard for the uh, for the Wahoos. Did Coach Bennett reach out to you Sunday right after the victory? I got a lot of text messages, and yeah, Coach Bennett was one of them. And I think I think I lost count somewhere around the, the late 200s. It was it was a lot. It was a lot. But that's that's the neat thing about this. And when you're as old as I am, you end up knowing a lot of people. Not knowing where you're going to wind up, do you feel like this Liberty team will be a tough out for anybody that you play? Uh, I'd like to think so. I think I think we've prepared our group in such a way that uh, uh, we we're, we're really focused on our next opponent as as well as we are uh, getting better ourselves. And again, that seed line won't define us. I think the positive about our non-conference schedule is we probably will avert a 15 or 16 line, even though um, I, I think a 15 can beat a two. Um, but but the the fact that, you know, we've done it against Georgetown, Alabama, UCLA, Vanderbilt, even games like at Kent State and Georgia State, uh, and, and then in our conference at Lipscomb and at FGCU, I think, I think we played quality opponents that were really good coaches. So, I think we're prepared for it, and I think our guys will have a belief that uh, that we can win any against anybody we play when we're at our best. The trick is, how do you get to your best? This team has a lot of postseason experience from the last two years in the CIT, but Keenan Gumps has NCAA tournament experience. So even though it's a Division three level, how much does that help that he's experienced uh, in that type of environment, even at a Division three level? I've never been in a D3 tournament, so I probably wouldn't be able to speak to that. But I do know that he's aware of the magnitude of the loss. Your season ends uh, the next time we lose. So uh, whereas if you lose in the uh, conference tournament final, at least this one this year for us, we possibly could have been an NIT team and probably would have been invited to other tournaments. This is it now. So I, I think he's fully aware of that. And also his age and maturity, I think, probably has – him a little ahead of maybe someone who's doing it for the first time and um, there, there's there's really very few people that are in our family that have been to the NCAA tournament or coached or played in it so I, I think for us it'll be a, it'll be a new experience for the most part but uh, I do think we have the character to not be overwhelmed by the moment at least I hope I'm right um yeah, yesterday um, I went back and just rewatched uh, some moments uh, of the game. Uh, we were celebrating, um, and just to realize that like all the hard work we've put in to get here, and for it to finally pay off um, in that game against Lipscomb, uh, being on the road, uh, it just feels good to finally be here. Um, and this team, like, uh, there's so many great people like in this family that deserve to be here. And so when you sit back and think about it, uh, that we're finally here. Um, it, it feels good. Lavelle, when you look back at that play that Georgie hit the three-pointer in the corner there with 15 seconds left or whatever, um, it looked like the play was a little bit of a scramble there with the inbounds to Scotty, and then he got it to you, and you were wide open. Um, just what was your thought process going through there? Because, I mean, you could have taken a shot or taken to the basket, but you decided to kick it to Georgie in the corner. Just take us through that play. Uh, so, yeah. Um, uh, Lipscomb, they almost made a, a good play on the inbound pass. Uh, Scotty uh, had a big time winning play uh, to catch it, grab it. Um, he threw it to me. I was open. I thought about it. Um, I seen Georgie out the corner of my eye. I thought he had a better shot than I had. Um, his corner three off of uh, my kick would have been a better shot um, than the one I would have taken. And so I just tried to take one dribble, uh, deliver him a pass where he could shoot it. And thankful for Georgie, he was able to make it. Uh, so for me, it was just not trying to think about myself and putting myself in that moment, but just uh, whatever would have been the right play uh, to help our team win, I was able to make that. And so that's all I cared about. That's kind of been the theme all year, hasn't it been? This team is really an unselfish bunch that, you know, if another guy's got the best shot, pass it to him. Scott? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we got we got nine guys that can that can really score. Just really good offensive players. So we know that like if one person's got an open shot, we know that 
Um, if somebody else has a better one, that we're going to go try to get that one and then just keep keep moving the ball. Um, we think that's a that's the best way to do it. Um, just getting other people involved, making the defense move, and like that play uh, that showed a lot a lot from lot to uh, to me about Lavelle and his uh, character and stuff. Just like knowing that he could have shot it, and just the the fact that he saw the he saw the one more pass, and just like kind of how just what we've been doing all year. He's been doing it all year, and just like that, just uh, his leadership is just really really good. Uh, yeah, I just kind of, um, I got hit and then I kind of sold it, sold it. Um, so that's, 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 that was pretty much it. Just got up and, yeah. Caleb, for you, you know, you've gone through too many injuries, you know, seeing the pictures of being emotional after the game. What did, what did this mean to you? Yeah, that, uh, that kind of took me back to everything I kind of went through. Uh, and then also falling short last year when I wasn't a hundred percent. So I felt like it was part of me as well. Um, so I got really emotional as well with Lavelle. Uh, I think there was a picture of me, Lavelle, and Mayo hugging just because of everything that we've been through. But I think that the emotions came just because of everything that this team has been through, not just myself. Um, seeing how we started off with the coaches coming here and then the, the four-year guys that were here that had to endure it all. Um, so I just think that was all the emotions that came. Um, <clears throat> well, there was a, there wasn't much time left, so it was pretty much, pretty much the game was over. Um, so I just, I just, uh, I knew that we had worked so hard just to get to the point where we were, and um, just to be able to go in and play really well against a really, really good team, and uh, be able to come away with the win was just like huge for me, and just, uh, just like I said, like just our guys, like. We deserve we deserve to be we deserve to be here because just because of the work that we put in and just like um, the togetherness that we have and it's just there's just it was special. It's a question for anybody outside of the games itself next week. What are you looking forward to as far as the experience, selection show, travel, seeing Liberty's name nationally and all the outlets and things like that? Yeah, um, I think it's gonna be very special for us. Um, I think that this is everyone's first kind of selection Sunday, so. I think it's gonna be pretty cool just to watch our name come across, um, and I also think that it's a it's a good way for us to make Liberty known and what it stands for. Um, I think that the guys that we have is a special group, and I think that we can go to the tournament and then really just shine the light onto uh, everyone else. Uh, yeah, kind of backing off what Caleb said, um, just being able to show like what a great university um, that we reside in. Um, and me being our first Selection Sunday um, and my last opportunity to get a Selection Sunday. So I'm going to enjoy it um, as well with these guys, just being here four years with them. Um, like they've been able to make me a better person. So I can't wait to just share that moment with them and just the uh, ride um, throughout the NCAA tournament and leading up to the game uh, whenever it is. Um, I'm going to make the most of it. Outside. Richie and the coaching staff that have been before, whether with another team or whatnot, are there players that have played in this tournament currently or that are not playing anymore that you've bounced ideas off of? Or, hey, what should we expect next week to kind of help the transition of not being there before you play? I haven't talked to um, anyone that has played in the ACA tournament. Uh, but I'm talking to people who've played in big games uh, professionally past NCAA. And just them just uh, telling me uh, to tell the team as being one of the leaders just to not get bigger than what the moment is, just treat it as any other game. Um, just try to stay calm and poised. Because uh, at this time, uh, teams, guys can start going their own separate ways uh, when they get into like the bright lights at the NCAA tournament. And so for us, uh, we're just going to try to make the game as just another regular or another regular game on the schedule. Uh, not try to get outside of ourselves, uh, and we'll see where that takes us. Yeah, I haven't talked to anybody. Um, only person I've talked to is Anthony Fields. Um, 
he was just saying congrats and everything and just, to just go to the tournament and just play all out. Um, it's a once-in-a-lifetime type of thing, so just go all out when you get there. For any of you, um, obviously it means a lot to yourselves individually to make the tournament and kind of win the Sun Championship, but uh, what about being able to do that for Coach McKay? I know it means a lot to each of you. Yeah, we knew, uh, <clears throat> obviously I, I came three years ago and uh, just like, seeing the growth that we've had as a program and just like uh, obviously I wasn't here for the first year which was a little bit rougher of a year but um, just like being able to see the growth of the program and just like how coach as coach McKay just um, stays with it and just always always tries to always tries to get better and uh, he's he's really been um, we know we know we're not defined by getting here or not but just just the fact that he's really wanted to be here and uh, we, we made that happen. Uh, yes, yeah, a real special moment. Um, just knowing that four years ago, uh, this is the exact vision that he had uh, set out, and not just being complacent with getting here. Like he's really competitive, uh, so he's had bigger goals. But uh, him selecting me to be a part of this journey with him uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, knowing that he wanted to start this journey with me, and for us to end up where exactly where he wanted us to be four years later. Um, it just shows a testament to him as a coach and as a man. Yeah, I think it's going to be very um, fun knowing that the students get back. Uh, we'll start class that next Monday, and then also that it's open to the public. I think that that's really good. So I think we'll have a good turnout, and um, we get to watch it with our family, of course, and which is the basketball team. Um, I think it's going to be a very special moment for us. Nah. You got one? Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whoever. Whoever. Scotty, do you feel like this team is um, constructed well enough to be a tough out for anybody you might run into in the first couple of rounds? Is this team, you know, a tough out for anybody? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, Coach Coach McKay has done. Coach McKay and our staff has done a really good job of just recruiting the right guys and uh, making and preparing us every day and just like working with the the defense and everything. Uh, I'd say uh, obviously we're really confident. Uh, we don't. We're never going to go into a game and be like, "Oh man, we're going to lose this one." We don't. We don't think. Uh, we, we. I don't think we would think that about any team. Uh, so we're just going to go in and just prepare for every game and then uh, go from there. Yeah, um, I think that those losses really exposed some of our weaknesses that we had. And um, I think that the coaching staff did a really good job at after those losses really keying in and going with film and then different things that we did on the court to get ready for the next game so that those weaknesses weren't there the next time. Um, but it's also just the little hard details that we do every day that lead up to the games. Um, we rep out things every day. Um, we try to get better at them. So I think that that's something that they really keyed in on. Against Lipscomb, 9 0 run to end the first half and then hold them to one field goal the last two and a half minutes of yeah. the second half. Was that one of the weaknesses that you guys made sure you shored up? Yeah, um, every day in practice, we usually do a um, three stops and we're done type of deal um, where we have to stop the opposing team that we're playing, which is our scout team. We have to stop them from getting three baskets. So we got to get three, diff three defensive stops. And I remember in a timeout that we came to, um, I don't know how long it was to go in the game. I think there was like four minutes left. But I told the group of guys that were on the court at the time that it's just like the end of the game or end of practice. Let's have three stops and let's get the game over with. And I think that we really did a good job at that. Like you said, we shut them out for two minutes. But I also think it's just things that we do every day. We try to just compete and get better. With that, I'm sure that days off were nice. Uh, what, what were you able to do uh, on your days off? But how eager are you for Selection Sunday to get back into practice and get ready for <coughs> finding out what you're going to do on Sunday? Uh, yeah, the day the days off were nice for me. Uh, I was able to uh, rehab my body um, as well as uh, any other guys on the team that were banged up. Uh, so that felt good. But just getting back to doing what I love, playing basketball, um, 
it's going to be fun. Um, looking forward to finding out who we play. Um, getting ready to put in our game plan to uh, go in for that game. But as far as just uh, not knowing if we were going to um, play again with these guys, but then I get to go on the court and get more practices and more games uh, with these guys. So that's just a dream come true for me because I love this team and this family. And they've been my brothers uh, since I've been in college. So just getting the opportunity to step on the same court as them again, um, I'm going to be very grateful for it. How's your knee feeling now? Uh, my knee's good. Um, no pain um, after the game or today. So uh, we'll see how that goes in the future. Yeah, definitely. Just cause I I knew what to expect, and you know, in this type of uh, of game, especially the championship game on the road, uh, and you know, I I experienced that last year, and you know, like I think I told you uh, earlier that week that you know that ain't gonna happen, uh, especially this year, just cause I have experienced this, and you know, and I I know I know what to expect in this type of game. It's just it's another basketball game, something we've been doing our entire lives. Uh, I've been to uh, NCAA tournament games, so like first round and Final Four, so I kind of know what the game is going to be like. So I'm just I'm just excited to compete. You can't draw it up any better. Uh, my dad exact said the exact same thing when we were uh, on the court celebrating. That's kind of funny. Um, but I was just thinking about my journey and then just my team here and how they've accepted me and just welcomed me into the group. And it's just been a fun ride. It's been amazing. What was the emotions like when the final buzzer went off for you? Oh, I was crying. Uh, it, it was just. Like I said, everything everything just hits you at once, and especially winning a championship. And when you know like you're gonna win the game, like you're already up by like four up by six, so they have no chance to come back in four seconds. So you know what's happening, and when that buzzer goes off and everyone's rushing the court, it's just it's it's an exhilarating feeling. George, I saw you have a moment there. It just, uh, I think he, since day one, since I came to his program, he, you know, he been pushing me uh, in in both ends on the floor, but especially on defense and and do like all the little things I did in that game. He just, I just saw Coach who's like, you know, uh, emotionally crying, and I just, I had to, you know, go over him and and hug him just cause and thank them for, you know, for everything he has done for me since day one and. And uh, yeah, I just saw him just like all the time, all the moments, all, all the meetings I had with him, just you know telling me, hey, there is more for you. You you know you are capable to do this, do that, and just all all I thought is all about that. And you know I had to, I just came there and just I, I had to give him a hug. So. I think he's it's been a lot for him and uh you know, all like you say, all the struggles and but you know, he show up here, he show up to to our practice, to every meeting and you know, to the com to show the commitment he has even though he he had the uh situations back home. He just you know, he, he just show his commitment and his character and you know, he he's just a tough one of the toughest 
person I ever made in my life.